We bout that inner fulfillment, sipping the cab, never spilling. Pinot Merlot, in any way the grape can give us that feeling. Business and marketing and sales revealing all of that realness. Health is wealth, are you with me? We talking wellness and chilling, spilling anything but a drop. It's important to tell, it's not just about cash, but it's about doing more for yourself. So pour a glass, don't have to share with anyone else. Leave your problems on the shelf. You tuning in to wine and wealth. Welcome everybody. It's Friday before Memorial Day, so we're getting it started early. Mm-hmm. Amen. Ha- cheers, my friend. To cheers, my non-drinking sir. friend. Yep. It's been a while. Welcome to Wine and Wealth again. Mm-hmm. Also. We're on video today. What's up, everybody? I want to send a salute to my Diamond Handed Apes, the GameStop crew and AMC crew. It's been a Absolutely. good week. Yeah, buddy. The show is not sponsored by Diet Coke. Yeah. I need to take the label off. <laughs> but it is sponsored by Apes. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, I've been waiting a long time. Testing my patience. <laughs> the squeeze is squeezing. <laughs> All right, what are we getting into today? Moass. Uh, <laughs> we're getting into Moass. Okay. Mother okay. of all short squeezes. Mm. No, that's not today. Okay, what right. we're getting into today is you, my brother. Okay. We're getting into human behavior. All right, cool. You took a trimetrics, yes, I and did. I want to debrief it, and I want people to hear it. Okay. Now, first things first. Legally, do I have your permission to share your trimetrics report with the world? Yes, you Thank do. Thank you very much. Yes. Got that. Luckily, you are not a psychopath, and this won't be too weird for me. Yeah, at least now we know for a fact I'm not. I was worried for a minute. Yeah, so. <laughs> one may, you know, <laughs> if they heard your stories. <laughs> I've known you since when? How old were you? Mm, at least sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And now you're twenty-eight. Wow, we've been we've been together for a hot minute. Yeah, definitely. And look at you. Now we work together. But I, I had you work for me for a specific reason, and the trimetrics is going to. kind of explore that right Right. uh as we as we get into our working relationship one of the benefits of us doing something like this is we know when we frustrate the shit out of each other oh yeah and where that is not something to scream about but it's to celebrate it's just our behaviors yeah on different ends of the spectrum. We had a pretty good conversation about this morning. Mm-hmm. We, we kind of like, like I gave that suggestion to you earlier and I was like, I don't even remember you giving it to me. <laughs> I like to work things. That, and I was yeah. like, wait a minute, what are we doing? Yeah, exactly. We're just not adapting. It must be Friday. Mm-hmm. And, and then it calls for a great reason to even do this episode. Today. Exactly. So here's a cool thing. When you know that you get to take the personal junk out of it. Mm. It's not me not liking you. Right. It's me not liking the behaviors that you possess. Right. And, well, that, you, and that shouldn't be something that people should be taking offensively either, I would think. Exactly, because behaviors are just behaviors. Yeah. Look, I want everyone to think about this. Have you ever gone to a social situation and met some people that you've never met before and said, you know what, that person, I just really liked them. Mm-hmm. We just clicked, right? Yeah. That's happened. Conversely, you ever gone somewhere and been like, that mother, he didn't, he didn't do anything to me. He didn't, he barely even talked to me, but that person don't like, him. yeah. Right. Oh yeah. You have no basis. You have no, you don't know their history. No reason. Right. That's just behaviors in, and a lot of his driving forces that we're going to talk about here in a minute at work. It's called natural rapport versus unnatural rapport. Mm. You had the freedom in your life to surround yourself with the people that you choose to based on your similar personalities, value system. You know where people are different, that you like those gaps being filled in. You don't like people who are that different. You don't want the, a lot of those are values. You don't like people with different values. And I'll, I'll share with that in a minute. But in sales, you don't have that choice. Yeah. You no. can't go, you know what? Three out of the five prospects that I have this week, I don't like them. So I'm just not going to sell them. Yeah, no. You're going to have a pretty shitty sales career. So you got to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you got to adapt. So let's talk about exactly what we're doing today. This is called a trimetrics report. Try meaning three, three sciences. Disc, science one. Driving forces or values, if you want to call them that. Your why is science two. And Hartman index 
acumen, axiology, it's got three different terms, is your view of yourself and the view of the world. Got that's it. the third science. We'll call it Hartman Index because that's who created it. Those three sciences give me a pretty clear picture of who you are, how you behave, why you do things, and how you see yourself immersed in that world and inside your soul a little bit. Right. So when we look at that, now I got to clear as someone who's, I'm going to move this to a hiring standpoint, I know based on this information, I can predict how you're going to act and behave in my organization. Therefore, I can lead you better, mm. and therefore I can manage your integration into the team better, and I can put you in low stress, high productivity situations. That's why people do benchmarking. You wanna benchmark the job, so when you come in and you take an assessment, if you're close to the benchmarks, it means you're not gonna be stressed out, you're doing what you're naturally good at. Mm -hmm. If you're far from the benchmarks, eh, for you to get up to what's required of the job means you're gonna be stressed every day, low right. productivity. So that's how this works. Um, but for you, I wanna kinda of get into it because this is really beautiful that we're so different. Mm -hmm. Our For those who are watching this, the our disc graph goes like this. Yeah. We're like a <laughs> bad married couple, or a good married couple. <laughs> and uh, it comes up, and, and I just wanna share with the team why I love having Alex is what he does for me, where he frustrates the shit out of me, where I frustrate the shit out of him, and where it's just not a big deal. Because again, we get to take it and, and kind of like take this little ball of behaviors and set those aside and be like, it's not that I don't like you, <laughs> I don't like your behavior. And you get to say the same shit to me. Yeah. It takes all the emotion out of it. Yeah. So let's get into it. So um, I am going to screen share this because I want people to see and be able to follow along as we're going through this because I think if we're able to do that, then people will have a clear idea of what we're looking at. So this is gonna be the first one where we have an opportunity to show everybody what mm -hmm. we're doing. And let me hit record just so you have a timestamp on this. I am going to record to the cloud. Sh da -da -da -da. Now. Boom. Boom, here we are. Now you should see it right there. The magic of editing. <laughs> Is your job in, in action? Yeah, it is. There That's what go. he does, folks. <laughs> Ask me to edit shit, you'll get a get scribbled notes on a piece of paper. Outsourcing it to Fiverr. <laughs> My name is Alex, not Fiverr. Yeah. Fiverr. <laughs> okay. Now, what I'm staring at right now, the first thing I'm looking at, is show you two, is your disk profile. Very beautiful. Right mm -hmm. there, you are. Now. You are what I would call a CS personality. You're 74 C, 68 S. Your I is below the midline and your D is below the midline. For the record, when I said we do the cross, I am 97 I, 76 D, like 32 S if I remember, and if my C could be negative, it would. I think it's at like eight, <laughs> to be honest with you. Okay. What that says is you are detail-oriented, mm -hmm. process-oriented, not an over promiser. Mm -hmm. You don't want to commit before you have all the details and you you would make uh, logical decisions. You would want people to come to their own decision logically. Mm -hmm. All that. Oh yeah. I am high emotion. Buy when the emotion's high. Get people's emotion level high. Only give me the results. I don't want any details. Don't tell me how the damn watch works. Just tell me the time. <laughs> Oh God, yeah, no, I, I, when I hear that, I go complete opposite. I'm like, no, I wanna know how the watch works. That way I know in which situations I can, is it waterproof? Is it gonna be, no, I am that kind of person. <laughs> exactly. That's this me point. beating my head against the floor, folks. <laughs> Alex one time said, look at this, they're dissecting an iPhone. I was like, how long is that video? And you're like, it's like 90 minutes. And I was like, are you out of your mind? Well, he was still in a full repair. They, it was found in the bottom of a lake, so it had salt Jesus. water all in it. So he had Stop. to go in. Okay. You're going to make me drink more <laughs> daytime Prosecco than I planned. So keep, keep showing me your numbers, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this is why we work together. This is why I hired you. Yeah. Now, would it have been fun if I hired Tony 2.0? Yes. There would have been a lot of beer drinking, wine drinking. As you said... A lot of ideas. A lot of good ideas. A lot of great ideas. 
And this happens. I throw ideas at you all the time. You go, okay. And then you break my heart, my soul, and go, how exactly would we do this? Yeah. And you start timelining it. You start projecting it out. <laughs> Are, you ready? Are you ready? You start bringing all the ba- the bad things that we could almost do, right? Uh, so I'm keeping an eye on it. It's Alex okay. is laughing because he told me not to hit my wine, and I said it'd be fine, and I almost knocked it over. <laughs> See? You're good. <laughs> So that's, but you are perfect partner for the business. Right. Do, do I get frustrated? Of course, but I need it. Mm-hmm. That's why you make clear decisions based on data. So for those of you who are hiring, the worst thing you can do is bring your own personal bias into the hiring situation mm-hmm. because you have flaws yeah. and you have blind spots. If When it's on paper like this, it removes the blind spots and it removes that bias. So I was able to, when I saw your trimetrics and go, you know, if I'm going to be honest with myself, do I have a, the hardest time communicating with C's? Naturally, high I's and high C's have the hardest time communicating with each other. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's uh, going to be something. But does Alex, being my only partner in this business, I don't have 20 employees, I have you. Is that needed for me to be successful? That is a resounding yes hired we train each other we work we constantly talk about our our trimetrics i was gonna say uh, to put a little pin on that one too something that uh, if you get someone that is a good coach like you and then someone like me that is extremely detail oriented but you want results you want the emotion and xyz you'll push me past the quit worrying about the details just do the thing and yeah. sometimes it does push me out of the comfort zone a little but it winds up being a good thing because in the end i see the result and guess what the world didn't blow up because i didn't check every little thing yes. you know and that helps me grow as a salesperson and as an emotional leader well think about it the <sighs> People that are outsourcing this stuff mm-hmm. to you, all your customers, yep. they're a bunch of me's. Otherwise, I'd be doing it myself. Yeah. So you have to, it's just as important for you to understand this because a lot of the customers that are going to hire you are saying, I don't have the time or the will or the attention to detail to handle that. I'm outsourcing it to you for the result, which is the thing I'm always reminding you about. Like when you put the proposal together, you don't need five pages and details of how you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Give them the result. Right. And then, you, you know, this is where we talk. Well, how do I give them a result when, when social media is, is so dynamic and fluid, and but like, going. and you can say all that, but the buyer is going to go, just, I don't care. <laughs> give me the result. And that's why I'm hiring you. So I don't have to hear all exactly. this. Exactly. So anyways, that's, that's how, so as you look at, and here's if, for those of you looking at the screen, you'll see it says natural and adaptive. You'll see that Alex's are identical, which tells me that Alex sees no requirement for him to change his personality for his, for what's required of the job, right. which is good. That means low stress. Mm-hmm. You're not stressed out every time you have to do something for your work. No, not at all. You love it. Yeah. I actually really enjoy it. Yeah. Where we have a real problem is if I go into an organization and we do a bunch of assessments for people who are already in the organization and their natural is one way and the adaptive is the other. So what would that mean? I say this person is waking up every day stressed. They're having to move. Let's just say the perfect thing would be um, if I were to get into a job like yours, Mm -hmm. high I, right? But what's required of the job requires a lot of C type behaviors, right? Every day I go into that job and my C is at an eight. And let's just say, hypothetically, we did a benchmark and we said, you know what? Bare minimum 65 C's required for this job for it to be successful based on what we said, the benchmarks are other people who are successful in this job. That's what's required. I'm at eight, 65 is required for me to come up. And then, although, by the way, I'm saying, if my adaptive then says it's different, I realize that C is required. Okay. Oh my God, to get up over 50 point, to manage a 50 point delta in a behavior that's not natural to me, mm-hmm. wears on you physically, mentally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. TTI says anything more than 15 points on this graph equals stress. So imagine if it's big. Yeah. <sighs> And conversely, if we have numbers oriented people, people that this happens a lot, someone says they're in sales when in reality, they were in account management, they were high S 
relationship people. They could be an IS. They were good at managing a long-term relationship, customer service oriented, fire putter outer, but they said sales because they didn't know what to call what they did. Right, okay. But I have a job opening for a hunter. You're knocking on doors. You're you're moving a, a customer who's not in pain to pain, asking tough questions, closing before you you feel uh, before you've ever felt more comfortable closing before you you have to hard close right yeah more of a kind of a traditional aggressive hunter role yeah that requires di personality and your s well I said I was in sales I was successful in sales. Okay, good. You've got a long sit here. You're hired. Boom. Start being a high D. For high S to get up there, mm-hmm. that is stressful. One month, two months, three months go by. Every day, waking up. Oh my God, I got to. What I did yesterday doesn't matter today. Mm-hmm. What I sold last year doesn't account for anything this year. Oh my God. The, the calendar spins over every year. I'm at zero every year. Oh my God. That's tough. That's yeah. stress. And so that's why we make sure that we don't have this. So for you, look, what I hired you to do, and as you were thinking about this job, mm-hmm. you're you're saying, I'm not stressed out every day I come to work. Yeah. You're invigorated. So that's good. Yeah. It's a good thing. So in the report, I'm not going to go too much into this because I don't want to kill people with too much data, but it has a couple of things where we get to talk about, all right. What are Alex's tendencies? I was going to say, let's just all talk about the flaws. That's yeah. the only thing that's going to be of interest in here. <laughs> no one wants to hear what I'm good at. <laughs> well, C's, C's are a challenge for most salespeople. Like you would be identified as a challenge to sell because most yeah. salespeople are I's and D's, right? Mm-hmm. And C's are the ones that delay decisions, so they want to remove emotion out of the decision. Yeah. They don't want to make wrong decisions, so they analyze, analyze. Mm-hmm. If you were a salesperson, you would you know you would have a tendency to this first one, which I I know to probably be pretty true. You're getting better at it because of your self awareness, but rarely change your style to meet the buyer style. Mm-hmm. You come in and be like, "This is the way I know to get results." Yeah. Without thinking about how you would change your conversation, the words you use, a proposal you make, yeah. um, and you get bogged down in details and use details to protect his position. Folks, truer words have never been spoken. <laughs> and your friends that are listening to this oh, know yeah, this. They know it. They know yeah. it. Just ask him about Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> He'll go into like a detailed well, book The year report. was February 1973. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, you know, there's one not getting the buyer emotionally involved. Mm-hmm. Emotions don't factor into your decision making process. So why would it factor into someone else? Bingo, and that's personal bias. Yes. I, so, and, and honestly, I've recognized that personal bias even doing retail sales, like just doing like basic, you mm-hmm. know, like run of the mill mall stuff. Even trying to, I would be working on a you know sales goal, and I would find myself not being able to wrap myself into it emotionally, and trying just to get the average Joe schmo to think based on logic and reason, mm-hmm. and that's where I would find the stress level that you were talking about earlier because I was having to pull myself out of the detail, make sure this is absolutely what they want. Let me just sell them on the right here, right now right. emotion. Yeah, this yeah. kid just saw somebody with that. Same pair of jeans are like, I just want to keep up with the Joneses in school. Yeah, exactly. Not, oh, but you know what? But this brand has actually better material. So right. even though you're only spending like $10 more, it's going to last you like an extra year. You know, yeah. so they don't give a damn about no, that. They They're don't like, care. What is that? That's not the right the brand. The emotion of it was, I just want to be in with my crew. Yep, exactly. That's it. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave with this one because it's hilarious. Because I have to, I think you actually feel me coaching you through this. Fear of mistakes is one of your time wasters. Mm -hmm. Uh, You want to avoid criticism. You tend to take criticism a little personally, and you want to be seen as efficient and competent. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is you you process, process, process before taking step one. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you'll hear me saying, Alex, let's just do it. If it fails, we can regroup. Yeah. Well, at least know. And this is probably the benefit of the two of us. We meet, we sometimes mm-hmm. get to the middle of that. You're like, Tony, it ain't ready. Don't mm-hmm. jump in. And I'm going, Alex, if we don't jump in now, 
we're never going to jump in. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be perfect, even when you think it's perfect. But that, like, my immediate, like, on this hypothetical, my immediate, like, gut reaction comeback is, yeah. But then, if we have to restart, we've wasted time, and that time could be better spent being productive on the other things, yep. which is again the thinking and the processing yeah. and everything. And else. the way I see it is, you learn from every failure. Mm-hmm. What's it? I think we talked about this on a previous podcast, but a guy that worked for J.C. Penney made like a million dollar mistake. You know, yep. he, he wanted to go through the new business venture. He did it, cost the company a million dollars. He walks into JC Penny's office and says, I guess you're gonna fire me now. He goes, why would I fire you? I just spent a million dollars for you to learn a valuable lesson. Yeah, well that number one is a very good boss. <laughs> Well, he was very popular. <laughs> he he had some emotional intelligence himself. Yeah. Okay. So that was that was. A, by the way, folks, I'm giving a crash course on this because oh, totally. this is a huge report. I mean, it's 78 pages. Yeah, we're not doing that. Sorry. Yeah. So I want to move into driving forces because this is this is really um, important. It's the why you do. Mm -hmm. what you do disc is how you do what you do which is incredibly important i want to just take this moment for all my salespeople listening and my sales leaders the reason we separated out the the try the disc the values and the hartman index are three different ones is because when i get in to train a client the first thing i want to train them is is disc because that's the one science where i can uncover what you are the person sitting across from me and i can adapt without knowing you it's an observable language. I can look at your environment. I can hear how you talk. I can even do some pre-research on LinkedIn, Facebook, and all that shit and kind of get an idea of what your disc profile might be so I can better adapt as quickly as possible to increase rapport and messaging. That's why it's so important. That's why I don't use Myers-Briggs. Yeah, Myers-Briggs blends behaviors and values and motivators together. Okay, And since values can change over time with life events, mm-hmm. who you were 10 years ago on Myers-Briggs could have changed. The introvert extrovert part probably didn't change, but like, you know, what motivates you could change. So right. we separate those out for that reason on a leadership standpoint and for a sales standpoint, the only one that I can actually uncover just by hanging out or knowing you for 30 seconds to a minute mm-hmm. is DISC. Okay. This part, driving forces, I have to assess for or have to actually ask you. Got it. So that's why it's incredibly important that we do this. So as you move into driving forces, this is the why you do what you do. Now, let's take a couple reasons why I wanna know this. First reason, if I'm a sales leader hiring Alex Stiff, and this is a 100% commission job, and that's the main way we reward your performance, Mm -hmm. and The other way we reward your performance is awards, leaderboard, trip to Cancun, Mm. if you're in sales, diamond, platinum club, right? right? Those are the two carrots that move you Mm -hmm. or that we use to move salespeople into action. Don't I wanna make sure that your whys include someone who wants money or someone who wants to be recognized for what they do publicly. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that go, who doesn't, who isn't motivated by money? There's a lot of people. See, and I don't understand that one because I would say ever since I was young, my number one motivator for getting a job was I wanted money. So I think think from the very early start, I've been very money motivated. It's funny you should say that, Alex. Mm -hmm. Your number one driving force coming in at 86 out of 100, which is well above the national average. Resourceful. People who are driven by practical results, maximizing both efficiency and returns for their investment of time, talent, energy, and resources. Mm -hmm. In sales, we would call that money. I'm not going to do anything unless it gives me back time or money. Okay, yeah. By the way, the opposite of resourceful is selfless. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you used to go, oh, shit, there's a lot of selfless people out there, right? They do things for the betterment of the team, mm-hmm. right? Let me read off your, there's 12, by the way, 12 driving forces. Four, we call them your your primaries. Mm-hmm. The middle four, we call them situational. You can go either way. Given all this, and the last four, indifferent. You Those last four, 
you could not understand how anybody else would think that way. Right. So your top four are resourceful, mm-hmm. intentional, which says people who are driven to assist others for a specific purpose, not for the sake of being helpful or supportive. Meaning, okay. I'm not going to put any effort into you until you're putting in effort as well. Yeah, I can see that. The, the stupid analogy I use is you have two homeless people on opposite ends of the corner. Mm -hmm. One is playing the saxophone. The other one has a sign that just says, spare change, need a beer. Mm -hmm. Alex is going to walk over to the sax player and you go, you know what? That dude's trying. Yeah. You're gonna, the other, by the way, the opposite of intentional is altruistic. The Mm -hmm. altruistic person is gonna give the sax player money and because they, you don't know people's situation, give Mm -hmm. the other person money to. Right. So that's you. Three, commanding. People who are driven by status, recognition, and control over personal freedom. Mm -hmm. Meaning you want to live with the result that you've created on your actions. Yes. You want to be, if it goes wrong, you'll fall on the sword. Mm -hmm. If it goes right, everybody know well. Mm -hmm. Next time I ask to lead a project. Yeah, basically. Absolutely. And your personal freedom. Yes. Salespeople for great salespeople, some call them lone wolves, some call them all kinds of other stupid shit. But great salespeople say, look, if I'm getting a number, I'm getting a result, I'm in sales because I don't want to be micromanaged. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Some, fourth, these are top four. Receptive. People who are driven by new ideas, methods, and opportunities that fall outside a defined system for living. By the way, let me back up. The opposite of commanding is collaborative. Those are people who are willing to do things with the team just for the sake of the team's winning. Got it. Right? They they have no problem playing a role mm. on if the team wins. They right. don't need to be recognized. They get value out of the team winning. Mm-hmm. And receptive, people who are uh, driven by new ideas, the opposite of that is structured. Got which it. Which is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. In that your number, behavior, right? you're structured. Right. But in why you do things falls outside of a structure. I create the structure so I can release from the structure in my personal life? How you get to your why mm-hmm. is is your behavior. Your, okay. Your C personality, the structure, right. is how you achieve the goal of living a life Def- outside of a defined kind of, I wake up at yeah, six, got it. Okay. I go to work at nine, mm-hmm. lunch is at 12. The the nuclear family American dream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I don't know, I, I like being pissed by myself, so that might there might be a little something to that. <laughs> but, so, I wanna stop here for a moment. Remember the analogy earlier when I said, you ever go to a party, you meet someone, you can't put your finger on it, but you like them or you don't like them? Right. The mistake a lot of people make is that's behavioral. Part of that is behavioral. That's a third of the equation of why we have natural rapport. Okay. The other piece of this is this hidden section mm-hmm. of values. As different as you and I are on behaviors, it makes an X on the graph. My friend, we have the identical, almost in identical order, values and driving forces. Interesting. So the reason we do things, Mm -hmm. lines up perfectly. Okay, and maybe that's why we do make such a great team is even though we may come at it from different angles, at the end of the day, our main goal is still the same? 100%. Got it. It's it's this intangible thing that connects us. This is, again, there's so many things that go into this and this is why it's so important. And it's endlessly fascinating to me. I'll give you an example, a couple examples of how this is incredibly important. And I've had people who've been in my sales training programs who've taken the trimetrics, ask me to give it to their spouse and debrief it. Okay. My my parents make the X on the disc graph. My mom's 100 SC, my dad's 100 DI. Behaviorally, they could not be further apart, mm-hmm. but their value systems are identical. Right. The why they go about or why they do things is like, you and I are are growing together while mm-hmm. behaviorally we're here and we'll, yeah. we'll bicker, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Our why is incredibly important. F- so you hear the term opposites attract in relationships. Mm. Could be very true from a personality standpoint. Sounds like it. But from a value standpoint, it could be really 
And, and this is, it's so hidden and you could be overlooked in love and lust and relationships. Not until you get really far into your relationship. Do you not realize, man, our values are different. Yeah, that, that's where it, it it gets tough. So I'm not a relationship expert on those stand fronts, but I I can identify where there are on an assessment where you're having some challenge. When you realize this, you go, oh, that makes sense. And when I can do a, a comparison report and show you, look, this is what like I got one person who's incredibly structured, and another person who's incredibly receptive. The reason they're making every decision in their life and their family are different. Woo, that sets you up. That's a, what organization or relationship can thrive like that. Yeah. So you need to be aware. Way. Leadership. People lead based on their own value system. You and I, if we were to have an employee under us, we would lead them based on money, motivation, intentionality, commanding, being receptive. Mm-hmm. And we would lead them based on those value systems. Right. Even if they had the right behavior we needed for the job, mm-hmm. they would be going, these guys keep pitching me this thing but it doesn't serve my own value system. And people will not move you towards your goal unless it serves their goals and values. Right. That's human behavior 101. Mm -hmm. And I hate to tell you folks, especially the leaders who are listening to this, values and driving forces are incredibly dynamic. You could have a whole room full of DI personality salespeople. Their values and driving forces, You have some different ones. That's what makes leadership really freaking hard. Mm -hmm. You have to take that approach to each person's why differently and remove your own bias from it. So that's the big thing why we look at driving forces, especially from a leadership standpoint. The worst thing, there's two horrible things that organizations do when they're hiring people for a certain position. One, the manager blanket leads them based on their own value bias. That's one. I know what worked for me. It's going to work for you. Bingo. I do. How can my, how can my team not want to, I used to have this fight with people all the time. Go, what is it about my team? A couple guys on my team or girls that they just won't do a couple extra things to make a little bit more commission. They have bonus structures and they're not hitting them. Mm-hmm. Well, here's a problem. You have a base salary plus commission job. And you've hired security-minded individuals whose value system is not resourceful. It's selfless. They think every time they just hit quota and make your customers happy, that that is moving the company forward and they prefer structure and safety and low risk. Instead, you're never going to move them with that. Yeah, that makes sense. Think about that. Conversely, you get someone who's high resourceful in a salaried job one year they're going, how do I bust out of this thing? Yeah. <laughs> Where do I go? Where do I make more money? Yeah. Oh, sorry folks. Okay. So your situational ones are, these are actually pretty situational. Um, objective driven by you're 50, 50 on this. You can compartmentalize things. Sometimes you can look at how other people's experiences are affected other times that right. you kind of move in between. Let's move to your indifference. The ones that you're like, I don't understand how anybody thinks like this. They're the opposites of your primaries mm-hmm. structured. People are driven by traditional approaches, proven methods and a defined system for living. That's not Alex stiff folks. Okay. So, so, I think that was the thing I kind of got tripped up on before when you were like, oh, maybe not quite that much. So like what what in that uh, description is saying that I'm kind of being rebellious, so to speak. It's not rebellious. What traditional approach to life have you taken so far? I guess, okay, my overthinking brain, what would be the definition of a traditional life? Because it, it, it feels like there are so many shades of traditional. There's there's the traditional for people that have a family, but then there's the traditional for the single guy with a full-time job. So there's, I don't know, what would be traditional? Uh, you grow up past 25, you don't have a band, you definitely need a car to, yeah. to get around. You know what? Things can't be done by just being a video editor going off on your own. Who can still make a living at doing digital marketing okay. and have a band, right? Okay, got it. Understood. Got it. And by the way, these aren't all, not saying like, I tattoo this on your life. Yeah, no, not at all. But It's it, just some of it's, you know... Um, 
because it's also not a strictly black and white thing either, but this gives you at least a lot better determination yeah. of where I sit. And yeah. look, you're certainly, you're not very collaborative. Okay. I've seen you in your band. Mm -hmm. You're like, you just happen to have a band of guys that, that trust you mm -hmm. at this point. But how many times have I heard you say, guys, just do what I say, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing because it's so true. I've worked on that a lot more back in the day. A lot well, more back in the that's day. That's the four signs that we don't have mm -hmm. here. That's EQ. Exactly. Your EQ is exactly. kicking in. Yes. Right? Yes. How you manage other people's emotions is part of it. Self-awareness, one. How you manage people's emotions around you and your own emotions are two and three. So you've worked on that based mm -hmm. on experience. Because that is hard-coded in me. That That is 100% correct. But I do feel like, and I'm not defending myself i'm just simply saying i have recognized that in the last two years or so so that is one of the things i'm trying to make myself uncomfortable with is trying to be more just collaborative in general in life good you're moving into eq mm -hmm. you know as you get older you know you start to aggregate your experiences you you reacted one way back in the day and you know what you got um the reason I've known you since you were like 17 is because you moved to Charlotte on your own. When yeah. you, right? You have a different trajectory than a lot of, so you started living life a little bit quicker than a lot of other people right. that I know. So your EQ might be kicking in a little bit earlier. A lot of people's EQ, I'm not, I shouldn't say any of this stuff because EQ is malleable based yeah, on, is. on what you know about it. But right. for you, just naturally, is kicking in maybe a couple years early. And it's because I'm having the experience of being around people like you and being around other sales teams and being able to truly see how you interact and right. that kind of stuff. And you, just like we all did, you made a decision to react one way. You saw the result and you modify. Exactly. Yep. That's it. It's yep. called the star method. Stop, think, assess, respond, review. We'll do that again. Well, actually, that's a video, isn't it? Mm -hmm, that is we, a video. We have that on my mm -hmm, video. Mm -hmm. On YouTube, maybe? Is it on YouTube? If it's on your Instagram, it's on your YouTube. It's on your Instagram. It's on YouTube. It's on the Facebook. It's on, it's on the space. On, it's in the cloud. <laughs> it is in the cloud. <laughs> All right. So the third science. Let's get into this one because this one is, woo, it's a doozy, right? Doing the uh, certification for this was as about as C as I ever want to get. But so as I'm looking at, I want to show you this, right? You see the volumes of each meter. Okay. You see the ones on the right or the, yeah, the left says worldview, self view. Mm -hmm. You see they're color coded the same, like the far green bar here, people, worldview, green bar here, me, mm -hmm. right? So it looks at people, task. Systems, me, roles, future. Okay. They kind of match up, but it's just call the worldview your ocean, call the self view the boat. Okay. What's your ocean? What's your boat? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking at. So I'm seeing a decent little dip on one of them, but I see we'll get there. Yeah. And I'll tell you where that's not a problem. Okay. This is why I said, look, the, um, your, your Hartman index, which would be the only indicator where I would say, all right, we got some problems. This is pretty good. First things first is I look at on the world view, I look at your ability to understand others. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a little mini EQ window. Right. Even though technically it's not something we assess for in, in these, it gives me this little baby window of how good are you at understanding other people. Mm -hmm. When you look at these, you call them volume and then you'll, I'll, I'll reference two things. One's volume and one is bias. Okay. Those are the arrows on the side. Your understanding of others, your your volume is above average. It's high. Mm. So you have a high ability to understand other people around you. Your arrows are going up and down, okay. which means I would call it a neutral bias, which means you don't overvalue your ability to do that and you don't undervalue. You're just kind of right in the middle. Right. That's a good quality to have. Mm -hmm. If it was a down arrow, I would be totally happy with that in sales. What that tells me is you have a Good ability to understand people. Down arrow says, but you don't buy everyone's bullshit. Right. Man, let me put a sales scenario behind it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Alex, if I bring back a proposal that meets all your standards, are you ready to move forward? Alex says, yeah, I'm the decision maker. Mm -hmm. The person with the high and, but oh, by the way, your title says assistant to the manager. Mm hmm. That's an office reference, the right, office yeah, yeah. assistant to the manager. <laughs> you go, okay, 
good to know. But your bullshit meter inside your head is going, this point I'm trying to get his in. Yeah. Up Arrow would say, oh, great. Mm-hmm. I'll get you a proposal Highly tomorrow. Highly optimistic. Yep. Exactly. You're in the middle. Mm-hmm. You're kind of in the middle. Okay. Up Arrow, I would not say it's it's something that's a deal breaker, but it's something that needs to be trained. Okay. I'd say, look, you are you have to be a little bit more discerning. Mm-hmm. You have to dig into questions. You have to get a little bit better at qualifying decision makers. That would be a good training point. Okay. Next one, task. You're kind of right. I would like to see your volume meter on practical thinking a little bit higher. There's room for improvement, but you're right there at the, at the national average, meaning mm-hmm. exactly what it says. Practical thinking. How, when I look at certain tasks, am I practical about my ability to work through this? Which is fine for someone who's in your age group, who is in your situation, especially when you took this, you were like considering whether you're gonna leave your job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I took this almost like, I'd say maybe eight, nine months ago. So, and you don't have a bias either way on that as well. So I would just say, look, as, as you go through some of more of your, task oriented events in your job. I want you to start reviewing outcomes. Okay. Did you did you go too far emotional? Did you do, go too far logic? And just start kind of aggregating some of that data to improve them further on. Okay. The third one, systems judgment. Again, you got high volume, which means you have a high clarity on how systems work, mm-hmm. how they operate, how you would operate within them, and your bias is neither high or low. You're pretty neutral on it. If it was an up arrow, that would indicate with high volume, that would indicate that you have a high idea of how systems work, but you wouldn't trust anybody else to do them. Mm, got it. Okay. So if you were a manager and you're mm-hmm. like, look, this is how you do this. Let me show you how to do it. You'd be looking over their shoulder and be like, that's not how you do it. Just let me do it. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. If it was down there, you'd say, all right, you're going to, uh, I'm out of here. Yeah. Let me come back and see how you did. You're and, neutral. And, and with it being neutral, that does make sense. Kind of assessing the person in the moment coming kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, this person has a knack for it. You've got it. Or do I need to still watch over your shoulder right. for a few more minutes? It's just telling you like, how are the systems moving forward? You have a pretty good ability to project how a system, the inner workings of, of those things. Makes sense. All right. So, so your worldview is pretty good. The only room for improvement is some of your practical yeah. thinking, and that could be developed with just care and paying attention to it. Yeah. Um, Here's one that would normally be a deal breaker, but yours isn't. Okay. All right? Sense of self. Now I'm moving over to self view. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about the ocean. Now I'm moving into the boat. Mm -hmm. You have a high clarity of who you are. Your abilities, your competencies, where your blind spots are, and I love seeing this, a down arrow. Okay. You have a negative bias towards that, which means although I have a high clarity of my abilities currently at 27 or 27? 28. 28 year old Alex, my mm-hmm. abilities, my competencies, where I am. I'm clear on what they are. My down arrow says there's plenty of room for improvement. Mm-hmm. There's more to learn. Where I have a deal breaker for my clients is if that volume meter is high with an up arrow says, I know who I am. I know my competencies. I'm the shit. I have no room to grow. I have no room to grow. And so you put that person in my training room, they're either going to push back, they're going to be a cancer for the other people when they go into the break room, Mm -hmm. or they're going to just kind of nod their head and go, yeah, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, and go back to it the way they always want to do it. Yeah. Untrainable. Mm -hmm. And if the volume meter's really high with an up arrow, that's borderline narcissism. Oh, okay, so that kind of confirms I'm not entirely narcissistic. <laughs> I wouldn't say you're not narcissistic. Again, anyone that would say that just doesn't match up with your communication style. Got it. Understood. All right. That was half joke. I, 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 I joke saying that I am most of the time. I thought you were going to say, I should give this to some of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't going to go there. No, yeah. I, I joke being, because again, being in the media space and you know, have, and us also being in music, our faces are out doing things a lot. So yeah. I have gotten the, you know, you're just narcissistic. So I've, no, I've, I've, I've thought about that one a little bit just to try to self-reflect. We're just commanding. We love being in front of the spotlight. There we go. Understood. Why do you think I'm a professional speaker and a rock and roll singer? Why do you think we're filming this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why I'm on my third glass of Prosecco. Hey, you gotta Hashtag love it, Ape Strong. <laughs> so what what else is on the uh, thing? Because like I said, this is endlessly fascinating to me. All right. So the 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 one that you looked at and you're like, oh, that one looks low. 
Mm-hmm. What was your roll awareness? Roll awareness was low. Okay. With a down arrow. But that's cool. Especially if I was looking to hire you, this would make total sense. This gives me an indication of where you think you are in your roles in life, mm-hmm. in career. And someone is looking for a new job would obviously have questions about their role in life mm-hmm. and career. Okay. So it being low, you have a low clarity on where your role is right now in your life. And mm-hmm. when we were talking about this, you were super frustrated at where you worked, at the retail store, what you're being asked to do. Mm-hmm. Your boss was a jerk. Mm-hmm. You're like, do I do I give up this salary job, 401k, to go take a risk, you right? That all those things tell you I am struggling with my role in life and career. Okay. So anyone that's looking for a job, I don't expect that to be kind of low. Where I'd be alarmed is if you had been with me for 10 years and role awareness is low. I'd be going, whoa. All right, two things are at play here. You either have a something's going on at home, Mm -hmm. you're having a, a home problem, or I have a leadership flaw that is not communicating what's required of you at this job. Okay. Those are the, mainly the two things that I would look at first. So if I was debriefing you, you'd been in your, your role for a while and it was low, I'd say, you know, this tells me that either you're struggling with mm-hmm. your work-life balance a little bit, like is something, do you feel guilty about being at work when you feel like you should be at home or something's troubling you at home? Or I'm either from a leadership standpoint, failing on you on what your expectations are, how you can grow. Is there something going on that I need to know about to help you? Cause I want to keep you here. Right. That makes sense. We've asked that question mm-hmm. a lot. You get some tough answers. You get, you get, I remember one, this is a story from my father. He told me this one, he, a top seller, all of a sudden having really bad numbers after like 15 years reassessed role awareness was in the shitter and we said well what's going on right i mean help we obviously want to keep you you've been diamond club for 15 years this is not this is indicating that something bigger how can we help you Mm -hmm. turns out his wife had terminal cancer Mm -hmm. and he was the breadwinner and so he was struggling with do I be home mm-hmm. or do I be at work? Do I spend more time with my wife or do I keep my family fed? Mm-hmm. And when you go, oh my God, that's it? Yeah. Get your ass home. Work from home. Mm-hmm. We'll co- Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Heck, sell. Still yeah. sell. Just don't come into the office. Yeah. And they did that. He stayed. He hit his number. I mean, it's a simple, and this this is probably 2002. Right. This is way before working from home was (laughs) was, was becoming part of the conversation. It's those kind of, we had another one where he's like, yeah, I just found out my wife was cheating on me with our pastor. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Okay, well, let's give you some Pay time off. Mm-hmm. This isn't your vacation. <laughs> Pay time off, right? <laughs> Little things like that. You're a top producer. I don't want to lose you. Definitely don't want to lose you to competition, especially yeah. when you want to get back at her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right? you, want, you want to be successful now. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but for you, your indication was, look, I'm struggling with where I am. Mm. I don't like where I am, but if I leave, I'm, I'm taking a risk. I'm not very risk oriented when it comes to like how I do things. Uh, I'm struggling. So I'm cool with your role awareness being there. Um, and your last one with your self direction, kind of t- where's my future going? Right. Where do I see my future going? You're kind of like in the middle, just barely above the national average on that. So I wouldn't be cause for alarm. Definitely room for improvement. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have a down arrow though that tells me that you don't really have the exact plan to get there. Yeah, Your clarity's kind of average. You're like, I believe I can get here. I have, mm-hmm. I have doubts and I certainly lack the like five year plan mm-hmm. that gets me there. Yeah, And so there I would say, look, this is, this is where the generic, where do you see yourself in one year, three years, five years? 
And have you ever thought about a plan on how to get there? Where do we play a part in that? Mm -hmm. Where do we not play a part in that? What's, how do you see this going? How do you best see this? How can we assist you in that? Those would be the questions I ask you because your down arrow tells me that you personally don't have a plan, which I'm cool with. Yeah. Are you looking for me for that guidance or do you want to try and figure it out on your own and we're just a stepping stone? Right. That makes sense. Right. These are the things I want to know. So if I was looking at you to hire you, I would say, you know what, between your, especially for sales, between your ability to understand others and your trainability, you're a win. If you're account management sales, you'd be a good hire. Hunter sales, not so much. Your DNI is mm. a little too low. I would, I would be worried that you'd be stressed out every day, hunting, 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 and handing off the project to an operator. Yeah. You're the person I would be handing it off to. Mm -hmm. That makes and sense. Manage your relationship, try and grow the account. You would mm -hmm. be a, an account manager that's responsible for growing an account. Okay. That makes sense. So those are your three sciences. And and what's really cool about this, I, I now... I get indicators based on all those scores. It, it aggregates it. Mm. It gives me things like conceptual thinking, your ability to plan and organize, project management. So now this is this is where I get to have a real non-biased, data-driven view of Alex. Mm -hmm. That's one now I say this is one third of the equation. The the other third would be your resume. Mm -hmm. And then the other third would be your interview. Got it. So that's how we look at hiring people. Wow. Uh, how many how many places do you think really incorporate this sort of tactic? Well, I'll say that there's been. I'm going to stop this share now, just so you know, mm -hmm. and we'll go back to us. Stop recording. All right, folks. There we go. We're back here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> what's up? Good to see you. I'm on my. <laughs> um, millions around the world through TTI, which is the company we use, have taken assessments. Right. Um, which is really cool because when I when I would tell you like against the national average or the global average, mm -hmm. you're basing off of millions of these assessments. Right. I'll tell you for us, Leon Resource Group alone, last year, I'd say we did 6,000 of these assessments. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I mean, you got people with 800 people, this, you know, I, we got one client that actually is started to give them to college seniors mm -hmm. because it's such a race to get talent mm -hmm. that if he can get them an assessment before they even hit the job market boom. Mm. and you're looking at, you know, 200 bucks, 250 bucks in assessment. It's a lot for, for the college down the street, but if you find three winners and you've gotten in front of them by saying, Hey, I care about you. Oh, I get to call Alex, Tony and John and say, Hey, you know what? Remember that assessment I gave you? Turns out we identify you at this company as someone who can really be successful here. Would you want to, wouldn't you be like, damn. And then you go through a process like that mm -hmm. and you feel really good about coming out of college of who you, you go, this is great. This yeah. is the best personal development I've ever had. Of course, I'm going to go work for you. Yeah. So for him to spend 10 grand to assess a batch of people and then only bring in people that meet his benchmark already, mm -hmm. he's shaving off all the fat. He's not having any of his time ways. It only cost him 10 grand. He didn't have to interview a bunch of knuckleheads to get to the three that he wanted. Mm -hmm. He gets to call the three. They're a slam dunk because he knows they're going to win and they feel good, so they're going to work for him. So for him, he's like, this is no brainer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. By the way, I'd love it for everybody to do that. Call me. Link Tony. in the bio. Yeah, link in the bio. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I mean, look, I did this with my wife. That We can do comparison reports. This is incredibly important because Ashley and I found out that we had a couple things in our driving forces that were identical. We had two that were identical. No, three that were identical, one complete opposite. Mm. Okay. And of course, you don't have to share details on that. So, but like in a close relationship like that, not necessarily like a business relationship, if you have such a, you know, foundational thing that's such polar opposites, how do you navigate through that? The first thing is self awareness. Mm -hmm. And you have to remind yourself that when that does come up, you almost have to be joking about it. So I'll give you an example. So Ashley, even though it's in my situational, 
it's pretty high still. And it's like one of Ashley's. I'm objective and Ashley's incredibly harmonious. Mm-hmm. Those are the opposite spectrums of what we're measuring other people. Got it. Uh, hold on. Is other people? I think it's others. Yes. No. How we look at other people's experiences. That's okay. what it is. Okay. So I'm objective. I compartmentalize things. Mm-hmm. I can get in an argument with Alex and go home and it won't carry over. I can get in an argument with my wife. I won't bring it here. Right. Right. Ashley is harmonious. Mm -hmm. If something isn't buttoned up in one part of her life, it affects her. I live in a straight line. Ashley lives in a circle. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if something's not buttoned up for her, cause she's always caring about how other people are viewing the experience. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, this is what it is. This is what this is over here. Where did, did it say where mine landed? I think you were, let me look real quick. Because because I, I have a feeling that in my head, I know which one I respond to, but I'm curious to see if it uh, matches up the same. Let me see here. You were, bum, 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 bum. let me go to driving forces. Where are you? Where are you? Let, let's see if I can guess it beforehand. I feel like I'm also a harmonious person. All right. I feel as if when, if a major, not something small, but if a major thing, goes wrong, I have a hard time compartmentalizing it and keeping it there. You're you're at 53 objective, you're only at 24 harmonious. Interesting. But I want you to think about it. It's people who are driven by the experience, subjective viewpoints, and balance in their surroundings. Okay. How do I put this? Let's just say you put on a rock and roll show. Mm Mm-hmm. And I want you to be honest. Mm-hmm. You play a killer show, mm-hmm. but the crowd isn't as into it. As who's who do you put more value value on in terms of leaving that experience? Going, I liked it. Did Alex have the better experience, and it just was a crowd that didn't like rock and roll, or did you leave there really disappointed? The crowd wasn't in it. I. I see where the 50 50 rolls in, but at times I honestly like on maybe lately I care more if the crowd's been getting into it. Okay. That that kind of where that's like kind of where I sit where it's like, it doesn't really matter if I'm not, you know, in the proper headspace going up there. My job is you, you paid your $5. I'm here to give you a show and I want to make sure you enjoyed it no matter what. Right. Yeah. And that's the, that's the entertainer part. So I'll read you harmonious. Okay. By the way, you're, you're, you're situational on both of these. Okay. Just no, that does well. make sense. Yeah. People who are driven by the experience, subjective viewpoints and balance in their surroundings, that's harmonious objective. People are driven by functionality and objective objectivity of their surroundings. Okay. 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 Right. So does this event serve this purpose? And then I move on to this event and it serves this purpose and I move mm-hmm. on to this and it serves this purpose or do they all work together? Got it. Like, okay. so, and, and these don't come to be a problem unless they're, primary versus indifferent your situation on both of these so you're already saying you can kind of go both ways yeah yeah so these don't have when you talk about what moves you you're kind of like you're you're again you're pretty situational on it yeah okay that makes sense A- ashley being so high on it i'll never forget she was like it's as stupid as as brewing coffee she says i might have told the story i apologize if i've told the story before but she said uh, did you like the coffee? I was like, it was fine. Mm-hmm. She's like, are you done drinking it? I don't know. She's like, do you think you have another cup? I was like, I haven't thought about it. I'm halfway through this one. Well, um, you want me to pour some out into this cup for you? I said, Ashley, mm-hmm. what the hell are we talking about here? She goes, I didn't like the coffee and I want to pour it out. And I was like, why didn't you say that? She goes, I didn't want to hurt your feelings because you made the coffee and I know you like to make it strong. And and I'm like, just pour the shit out yeah. and make another batch. <laughs> I don't care. I'm going objective. Like, yeah. I don't want to have this conversation. Just brew your ass new coffee. <laughs> yeah. That may, okay. And yeah. she's going, does he like it this way? Mm-hmm. Does he, does he, I don't want to hurt his feelings. Like I know I tell him it's strong a lot and I don't like it strong and I don't want him to get upset at me. And, and what if he likes this coffee and I make a light, all these things. Cause the experience of me factors into her happiness. level. That makes sense. There I get that. Is. Yeah. 
So that's where, and you know, it could bubble up on bigger things. Look, I had to realize this when we talk about what we're going to be doing for our anniversary. Mm-hmm. I am objective. Ashley is harmonious. Ashley prefers experience over things. I would rather spend money on anything for my car, for my house, for my truck, for fish. Ashley is like, I want to go on a cruise. Mm-hmm. I hate cruises. <laughs> no, I hate them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, every time something happens on a cruise, uh, look, see all those people that got s- stomach virus. Uh huh. <laughs> did, did, didn't all the start stuff last year yeah. from a cruise? <laughs> right. Yeah. So this is, but I have to be aware that Ashley is an experienced person. So you know, you get her the the overnight stay in a treehouse vineyard, even though it's not my ideal thing. I'd rather buy ten really nice bottles of wine. I did, I did see that postcard up on the yes. uh, fridge. It's going to yes. be, it's like a nice little trip. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a great trip. Would I rather have a case of really good wine? Yes, but we're going to stay in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and you just said exactly how you feel just there. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel after just from a data standpoint, mm-hmm. the science of Alex after going through something a little bit more detailed like that. How do you feel? Honestly, from my personal side of it, I am utterly fascinated and impressed that based upon the questions it gave me, it was able to extrapolate this much out of it. And it not only reaffirm certain things I felt were true. It also shows me, okay, here are the elements that if you do wish to truly succeed, you need to improve on. And anyone in the self-marketing circuit or anyone that's an entrepreneur would, I don't know, to be crass, be an idiot to not see this as extremely beneficial. Cool. Yeah. And you know what else? Think of having a team of people and you put this on a team graph and you go, Look at all the harmonious people. And you mm-hmm. get to put them on, at one table. And look at all the high Ds. Y'all aren't allowed to sit together. <laughs> <laughs> the high Is are definitely not allowed to sit together. Right? And then people start to see it because it's just data. I'll, you know, I'll, I laugh because I'll always have someone, after I get done the disc part specifically, but if we do trimetric stuff, they'll go, I knew there was something wrong with my husband, right? Ah, like, that's what's wrong with it. <laughs> I was also literally just sitting here going, I was like, I wish this wasn't $250 because I would love to give this to like three or four of my friends that I'll, like I work with on a regular basis. I'll hook you up. Okay. I'll hook you up. <laughs> There's one specifically. I'm like, I've got to know what you are. <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll talk. We'll get that offline. I'd be happy to give you one. Um, but, you know, when you, when you get to that level, now you're talking 10, 15, 20 people. They all got to work together. You talk any level of organization small startup of 10 people, a huge company of 800 call center reps. I mean, you need to know this stuff. And and I, the thing I love about it is you can't argue with the data. What's funny is I always hear, I can't believe how accurate it is. Well, you answered the assessment. Mm-hmm. You told us everything. This is just- Well, it wasn't just how accurate it was. It was how accurate it was based on the questions it gave. That, they are weird questions, that, right? That's the part yeah. that surprised me. So I'm not surprised that a program like this can really dig in and figure out exactly who I am. Like you said, again, I'm the one answering yeah. it. Why wouldn't it be me? But the questions it asked didn't feel like it was going to give this much of a detailed answer and really hit the nail on the head. I'd say about a good 90% of the time. It's, and that's what we're looking for. Yeah. I'm not looking for a hundred percent. No, but it, it was extremely, and extremely these, close. The questions in the assessment, people leave the assessment and go, how the hell are you going to get anything? That's out of what you just asked me. And what is, do- I can't go too far in it cause I don't want to ruin its impact for people who are going to take it. But just know if you do take it, Trust, first of all, the millions of assessments that have been done based Mm -hmm. on these sciences. But the other thing is, it's pinging parts of your brain that you consciously don't know it's pinging. And that's what I like about it. That's the power of it. All right, well, let's leave it there, my friend. That's great. All right, there we go. Um, So we're going to, the first visual one, there we go. I'm not going to do a too many of them, but I thought it was important to do this. I hope everybody enjoyed it. That was a crash course. It's 78 page assessment. Of course we could have done this for hours, oh, but yeah. I don't want to bore, especially my audio learners to death. And um, yeah, it was real fun. I'm sorry it was such a long uh, gap between podcasts, but I promised myself 
Alex and the audience, we are not going to do a schedule. We're going to do it when I have time, and we're going to do it when we have something to say. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So... And on that note, make sure you are subscribed to the podcast wherever you're listening to this, whether it be on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, anywhere. It's just, uh, the detail brains. That's why I love you, brother. <laughs> and tell your friends. We want to make sure to spread the love on this. Thank you. And I have been getting some love from people, so thank you for all of you been listening and sending me messages. I, it keeps me going. Sometimes you think this shit's going out into the void. Yeah. But I've been does. getting some love and you know, recently, and um, that'll keep me going. And I like it. I like sharing the, the knowledge and the love. So, all right, my friends, that was a fun one. Alex, thank you so much for uh, basically undressing in front of the world. Yeah, it works. There you go. <laughs> I have all nothing right. to hide. <laughs> <laughs> Till next time, my friends, happy Memorial Day. Happy selling. Peace. Peace.